Good morning. They wanted to get you back to basis, so they gave you me. I'm a simple guy, not very complex. I'm going to be doing an 18% presentation, 18 minutes presentation, and I prepared it for 63 years. So you better listen. It's a, I'm, I'm the wise guy, I'm the old guy. Have you ever heard about the Daruma doll? The Daruma doll is what the Japanese do when they start a new project. Then they pick up a Daruma doll and they paint one eye. To rem and this doll is looking at you until you're finished with your project. Then you paint the last one. So let's get started. If you steal another person's time, you're as big a thief as one who steals another person's money. That is what my father said to me, and he taught me the value of time. So, my question to you, do you steal from yourself? Do you waste your time? Do you waste other people's time? Then you throw away money, you throw away values. So, I'll tell you my story. As I told you, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old guy. I've been working a lot through all my life. And I'm been through a burnout three times in my life. The last one was two years ago when I met the wall. I was starting vomiting before I went to work. I was starting hyperventilating. I had to leave meetings because my, I was fighting and fighting and fighting to do all what I thought was expected to me, from me. And my body started to flight. You always have this choice, fight or flight. My mind was fighting, my body was fighting, so I had to see the doctor. The doctor put me on a sick leave for three months, gave me medication for two months. I went to a coach and we started working through my childhood and see why do I always have to say yes to what I believe people expect from me. So I managed to get through this and change everything in my life very shortly. The other day I made a test. You know, they have this test on the NRK, the radio station, the TV station has some programs about happiness in life. And I did this test to see how happy am I with my life. I'm an 86 percenter. <laughs> the average of Norwegian people is 64 percent. I'm an 86er. I'm proud of it. So, let's get on with the work. What is time? What is time? Has anybody here seen time? Has anyone here touched time? No. So when we're talking about time management, how can you manage something you can't see and you can't touch? It's not about time. i tell you what time is. Time is the world's most sustainable and democratic resource. Every one of you has 24 hours each day. If you get more than the others, it's because you live longer. So it's a resource. Time doesn't fly. Time comes. It comes all the time. So there's a rule of 24. You have 24 hours. And time and life is not Time, time, life is not about time, it's about what you do, what you fill into that time, as long as you're on Mother Earth. So I have a rule of 20, 24, I divide it in three. Eight plus eight plus eight, go on. Work, eight hours work, eight hours relaxation or refill, and eight hours sleep. What is this? Work is where you pull out your energy to, to solve problems. Relaxation. What is that? It's refill. Reading a book, walk in the woods with your dog, play with your children, make love to the one you, you, you love, listen to music, go to theater, everything. You have to refill what you empty from, from your creativity, from your energy. And then you need to recharge your batteries. You have to sleep. So this is a good mix. So, I also have a success formula that I learned from an old friend of mine. Let's go for it. 24 times A times S gives R. And you can guess, you're all working with mathematics and so on. You know this. There is one constant. Come on. 24 is time. It's a constant. A 
is a constant. S is a variable. And of course, R is a variable. So let's see what this is. 24 is, of course, time. This is my remote control today. I do like the dog whisper. <laughs> so A, what is A? Activities, of course. That's what we feel our lives with. And I will talk about why is A a constant. S, skills, improving our skills. And R is, of course, the result. So, Let's talk about A. A, activities. You have to prioritize everything you do in your life, and especially at work, especially at work. A, activities are tasks that lead you directly to your goal. So, do them. Do them now. Next, B. B, activities, are activities that support your A, activities. My activities in my office, I am in my office now. This is where I work. My A activities is speaking to you now. The B activity was booking flight tickets to come here. And I'm not very good at um, booking flight tickets. So I outsource them. I give them away to people who do this much better than I do and probably have them as A activities, like a travel agency. C activities, that are tasks that mostly are not important and all, and that someone else sent to you, because they don't think they are important either, <laughs> or else they would have do, been do, doing them. So, what I say, don't do them. Don't do them. Send them back to the owner. Let's move. Urgent versus important. What is urgent? Urgent is what happens when you're not ahead of things. Then you have to solve them up to the deadline. So urgent is about deadline. But important is about values. So there is a rule about that. Never do unimportant things until you've finished the no, never do unimportant things until you've finished the important things, if ever. Improve your skills. You know, that was a variable in my formula. Improve your skills. Focus on what you're good at. Become even better at what you're good at. And forget about those things you're not so good at. Why? Because you achieve more by focusing on what you're good at. And it will take a very long time to be better at what you're not good at. So focus on the important things. Let's talk about email. Who loves email? I don't. I promise you, I hate it. Try to be email smart, and there are some scary facts. Come on, one by one. 144 billion emails every day in, this, in the whole world. S nearly 70% of them are spam. Garbage. Rubbish. 28% of the workday work is used on email. The numbers come from McKinsey. I believe those guys. And 30 Hours per week you're using on email or electronic tools to find information and find experts and so on. So, what's your business title? Is it email reader? Hell, come on, you're using 13 hours each week reading email. Are you email readers? No, go back and look at your business card and start doing what it says. Email is where knowledge go to die. Now I'll talk a little about <laughs> now I will talk a little about social media and a new way of working. Everybody's talking about social media. Internally in IBM, where I work, have my daily work, we are using internal social media more and more instead of email, because email is from me to you. Social media are about jungle drums. The first social media was jungle drums. One guy in one village 
tried to send a message to one guy in the other village, and the whole village and all those in between got the same message. That was knowledge sharing in open dialogues. Open dialogues and crowd thinking is so much faster than email. Working only in your email inbox is like working, is like driving a car with a handbrake on. So kill email before it kills you. It nearly killed me. Be email smart, one by one. Sort email by importance. Blue dots in my email. I have blue dots showing that this email is only for you. And I prioritize them. Then I have some blue dots which is half full that says, this email is for me and for others, typically a work group. And then I have these circles. Come on, bring them on. And I kill them. I delete them without reading them. And don't respond by email, use the phone. It's so much faster to use the phone. If you can see if they're online, then call them, because you can listen to their voice. You can get what they feel. You can ask a question so much faster. And never respond an email with more than five lines. Give a short resume of what did we agree upon, who should do what, and when should we have done it. That's it. Delete these emails without reading them. I do that. I reduced my email amount by 80% reduction in my email because I work by these principles. Do not open your inbox until you have finished the tasks you decided to use today. And reserve one hour for email work, not more. Okay. Calendar, what's a calendar? In my mind, a calendar is a time budget. Be calendar smart. Don't, come on, just bring it on. Never book all the time in your calendar. You can't book 100% of your free time in the calendar. Always leave 20% for fire alarms. Then you have planned for those things that was not planned. See? Book time for meetings, and don't have meetings that is more than one hour. Book time for important tasks. That is what you do. Book time for important tasks. Book a meeting with yourself, so you reserve that time. Always have a to-do list. And reserve a fixed day for internal meetings. I only have internal meetings on Mondays. The rest of the week, I'm free to do whatever I want, but most of the time I spend with customers. I even spend time with customers from my home office because I work digitally. So I go, don't go anywhere. Be planning smart. I know you get the trick. Come on. Plan next year on this year's last day. What is that, that you do on New Year's Eve? Ah, next year I'm going to be slimmer, take off 10 kilos. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to work out, I go and tell my wife that I love her, I do it a lot more, and so on. That is not a plan, that's a dream. It's a plan when you put a date and a number on it. If you say, I'm going to take off 10 kilos, and I reach that goal 1st of July, then it's a plan. And then we do the same every half year. Every quarter we do the same. We do every month, we review the month behind and plan the month in front of us. We do it weekly, yeah, you got it. We do it every Friday, we do it every day. We also do a review. This is what I do every Friday, I have a weekly review. I have some things I should check off, I have a checklist, and I do those things. Everything in that, I can't move on be be before I have done everything here in my checklist. Reviewing my address list and so on. Meetings. Come on, be meeting smart. Have short meetings. Never have a meeting longer than one hour. All talking after one hour is bullshit. That is people repeating what, they, with what other people say. It's just a waste of time. Never a meeting without an agenda. 
You know those meetings without an agenda? You never get through it. Come on. Start and conclude precisely on time. And do not wait for late customers or late comers. If one of those, those guys comes, um, we are waiting for one of those guys 15 minutes, and there are 10 people in the room, how much time did we waste? Then we did what my father said we shouldn't do, have respect for other people's time. Budget time for each, uh, each agenda point. This we're going to talk about for five minutes. This is we're going to use 10 minutes, and this 11 minutes, and this 12 and a half minutes. So you have the budget, so everybody see how much time you have to discuss it. Use phone or web meetings, save travel. Travel is a waste of time. Come on. So let's talk about the office. Most of us sit in small boxes, booths. I read a book that said a booth is not, it's not for humans, it's meant for horses. And we are not horses, at least I have only two feet. So. Be office mod. Have less stuff on your desk. I know that one journalist in dog blood at one of the big Norwegian newspapers, when he died and then had to move every stuff out of his office, they found a bicycle between everything. <laughs> so, remove the guest chair. You know what happened every Monday morning? Some guy come to your office, sit down and talk about what he did in the weekend. And it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. If you don't have a guest chair, he won't go on because he has to stand. <laughs> Come on. Reserve silent hours. Put a label on the door saying that you want to be not disturbed. Come on. Shut the door, turn off your phone. Get out of your office, work at home. Work wherever you like to work, where you feel happy. Remember, work is not a place, it's what you do. So, be lazy. It's professional to be lazy, and I'll tell you why. I'll define the new lazy for you. Come on. Lazy people do only the most important things that don't care about the rest. And that is what I want you to do, to focus on the important things. Lazy people do, right, do the things right at once, so they don't have to do them again. They are 100 percenters. Or they send it uh, to another guy who have to do the rest 25%, which he is not skilled for, and then we end up with a solution that nobody wants, and nobody was skilled for that. So, be lazy. Do things now. So, we're getting to the end. GTD. You ha heard about GTD, getting things done. I have to finish this in 10 seconds. You get stuff in. You have to decide, is this something I have to do something with? If not, throw it away. Out of mind, out of sight. Or put it into a file where you could need to use it uh, later on. Is it actionable? Yes. Can you do it in less than two minutes? Well, do it now. Out of sight, out of mind. If not, put it in the calendar for another day when you plan to do it. Yeah. Start now. Be persistent and good luck. Hope I didn't waste 18 minutes of your life. Thank you.